right, folks. It's a Friday. I greet you. Welcome to another program in the series, Journalist Hangout. I am Citizen Jones Usen. Now, today on the program, DSS says it has identified sponsors of planned protest, just as Lagos denies report of planned uh, plans to use Oro to stop the protest. Uh, President Tinobu meets with APC governors, traditional rulers, and Islamic clerics over planned protest. Uh, but APC's 2023 youngest presidential aspirant, Nicholas Felix, will join us via Zoom for this discussion. And later on, we'll share this with you. INEC chairman expresses readiness to conduct local government elections across Nigeria. But let me report that I'm hanging out today with uh, Kalab Kalabari born Ibinabo Dixon. Ibinabo, Ibinabo, I greet you. Good evening, Stizu. Yeah. <laughs> Ibinabo, we are joined by Onwa born but Lagos bred Charles Ideho. Charles, I greet you too. Thank you. I appreciate um, Thank you, the Buguma lady. I've been to your, your <laughs> before. Very nice place. I ate fish. Thank you. And uh, some other um, medemende. You know. Oh, yeah. So when medemende. are you going back there? We don't know. <laughs> okay, the team is ready. I hope you are. Okay, our first story. You know, while a planned nationwide protest is a democratic right of citizens, the Department of State Services, the DSS, has confirmed a sinister plan by some elements to infiltrate the protest and use it to cause chaos and extreme violence in the land. Spokesman of the agency, uh, Peter Afunaya, gave the information. Now, in the meantime, the Lagos state government has flatly denied the rumors that it plans to use the Oru festival to stop the planned protest. In Lagos, Governor Babajide Sonwolu has let it be known that the state government has no involvement whatsoever with the festival plans that coincides with the protest beginning between the 1st and the 15th of August. Uh, Ibn Abo, we are at you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, for me, because a lot of people felt that um, the planned protest is uncalled for, but I feel that um, it is um, constitutional. If you have any grievance, you can aid by a peaceful protest. The problem at this point is how peaceful is going to be the protest, because... Um, you have not forgotten in a hurry what happened in 2020. Mm. And then um, that has put a lot of, um, you know, fear in the hearts of people. Too many people are planning. They are trying, I mean, there's panic buying already. People are shopping in a hurry. They are scared that probably they don't know what is going to be the outcome. But what I want to say at this point is this, that you cannot be fighting against something you term injustice. And then mm. while on that course, you actually perpetrating what could be termed injustice. Mm. So I want to appeal to the Nigerian police force to please be on ground and make sure that, you know, everything is kept within the law. Nobody operates outside of the law. Yeah. And, and also, also, um, you know, people, of course, we know that people are always, you know, ready to hijack protests like this. Mm. I want to advise... So, so they are waiting. Yes. So I want to advise, you know, because every protest there must be leaders. It must have a face. Who are the people leading you? So the leaders at this point should be responsible because you cannot go about destroying government property. Mm. You, are, you are indirectly destroying your own property because government will spend that money that is not enough for us to replace those destroyed properties. So we are appealing to them okay. that whatever level of protest is going to come up, it has to be peaceful. And I want to... It, it, it has to be tamed. Tamed. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I want to assure us, and I'm assuring myself too, that Mr. President is going to be listening and um, some changes are going to be uh, you know, expected mm. and we'll experience them very soon. Yeah, Charles, you know, in America, you, we are familiar with what's going on there. Uh, the director of uh, the FBI director, Christopher Ray, uh, faced the music 
Oh, no, no, face the House of oh, okay. uh, the House in America, and told them things about the plan, the, the attempted, uh, 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 you know, plan to assassinate, assassinate uh, Trump. former President Trump. Yes. So, in like manner, Nigeria's equivalent of the FBI, the DSS, is saying it knows some folks are planning to uh, cause mayhem, cause mayhem and, and chaos. Apart from that, what Zebrudaya will refer to as chaos. Uh, yeah, yeah. chaos, yes. Uh, oh, well, he's, he's fine. Uh, I've met him before, uh, Afunayam, a uh, fine, fine gentleman. Uh, but there are certain things he said in, because um, I, I read his, um, his uh, statement. Um, one aspect that I find very, um, very disturbing is mm. where he said that um, the protest is aimed at a regime change. But I don't think, I, 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 beg, I beg to disagree with him. I mean, there have been protests in... in yeah, uh, Charles, but you are not privy to the no, facts. I, I, I did, I no, no, but you are not privy to the facts before him. Well, you we see, I, I'm, I'm using the precedent. I'm using precedent because I, I'm, I'm going to be citing some precedents before now. I mean, uh, protests in Nigeria is not new to us. We have had labor protests, even during the days of Oshomole, uh, days even Ayubawaba, and before Joe Ajira and all that. No, no, you, you have forgotten October 2020. Uh, no, 2020. I, okay, okay. Uh, that's uh, the NSAS protest. Well, protest is not... Uh, when, when, whenever protest mention in Nigeria, because of what Ibn Abbas said, uh, people become apprehensive. Protest naturally is not, is not riot. Protest and riot are different. Mm. You understand? When there is a protest, protest is to, is to raise your grievances against certain policies of government, or certain ills in, in the society. I mean, people can decide to carry placards also to sell. I mean, we've, we've seen the we not go green, not go green. We had had protests in the past about students complaining about uh, maybe increased school fees in universities and also, and then the authorities will always come out to say, okay, let's look at your grievances and see what you can do in order to mitigate. Mm. That's what protest is supposed because to be. Because you are talking about the grievance, the students' grievance over policies. Uh, if, um, well, Ibn Abo, please, excuse me for saying this. The increase was from 25 kobo to 50 kobo. Okay. And the students... We did it. During my time in the, in the 80s, when I was secondary school, as, as a young boy, I, I remember when I started secondary school, uh, we, our, the body fees that I met was 30 naira, or 10. Mm -hmm. All right? That was... Um, when we were, we were in class one, when the government of UPA, UPN, UPN right, came in, and then free education was declared and all that. We, we, but again, the body fees was not free. We were paying 30 naira. Before you knew it, they increased it by 10 naira. And then the school said, no, there was a protest. And then they reversed it later. Thank you. Um, uh, even about Lagos State government has come out categorically through the first citizen of the state. The government has nothing to do with the Oro Festival, uh, whose uh, outing was planned to coincide with the 1st and 15th of August. I, I want to also say this, because there are some actions that should they play out, mm. people are going to misconceive the, you know, the truths of the mind and plans of the Lagos State government. So what I think he should do at this point is, apart from saying that he doesn't have anything to do with it, he has to talk with the people involved, those who okay. might want to come out with the Oro. Uh, uh, but but, but let, me, let me let you know that the Oro Festival would not come out in the afternoon. <laughs> what? And uh, traditionally, you, a woman, are not supposed to see the Oro. Including you and I, because we are, no, no, we no, are no, not no. addressed. Women are not participants. Women, women are not participants. Women are all no, non-indigenous. No, non Even split. you and I can also see it. Uh, Charles, we can't yes. split hairs over that. <laughs> go on, go on, madam. Okay, so, so, I, so I feel that um, there has to be some, some discussion because we don't want the people who are coming out to peacefully protest, you know, to... Be entangled. Let, yes, with... with Traditional things. Yes, we don't want mm. it escalated. They, they, because they, the moment, they are two different the bits. moment they have the perception that the governor is trying to play a fast one on them, mm. it might degenerate into something else. We don't want that. Yeah, of, of course you know my country. Your country is a country of uh, religion. Uh, uh, 
what they call it. Okay, okay. And I, I got you first time. Mm -hmm. mm. But for me, if, uh, if you don't... Conspir a country of conspiracy okay, theories. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. But for me, I think... Um, you are uh, not theorizing. Uh, are no, you? no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, there, there, are, there, are, there are two angles to this. Uh, on the one hand is the Euro Festival. If you, because I, there was, I, 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 once, I once edited a culture magazine, which, of course, gave me the privilege to actually deep, deep, uh, in, deeper into the, cult the culture, uh, travel to some place in Africa, concerning this issue of culture and traditions. So what I, what I understand by Oro, Oro is not something we just, uh, by fiat, declare, okay? Uh, it's, it's an annual event, but there are occasions where you can declare Oro when there's, a death, there's a, a death of a monarch of a particular community, or maybe a, high, a highly placed chief or something. They can, the Oro is, is like a day of money or something, or a period of money, okay, mm -hmm. to mourn the, 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 the bereaved, or no, to mourn the, the departed and all that. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying here is that Lagos State Government I don't think there's any nexus between a state government asking the traditional institutions to go. Is it, is it, although it's like, it's like Christmas or Ilea, for instance. Okay, okay, because people want to protest. Only because say, okay, let us do Ilea or let us do Christmas to coincide. So no, for no, me, you, I you think... Don't bring Ilea in. Let's talk about Oro. No, that, yeah. what I'm saying first is that it is also a, like what uh, uh, our friend uh, Akosile said. Lagos State Government has something to do. It doesn't influence all these festivals and their dates. Yeah. Lagos State Government, okay, for instance, I want to do Christmas. You say, okay, Christmas is going to be from 1st of August to, uh, to 15th because they're going to be uh, protest. You say, Lagos State Government, you say, okay, they should postpone Christmas. All right. So for me, there must be a way to understand that, as you said, it's a nocturnal, nocturnal activity. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I think that uh, protests will not, will not exceed maybe 6 p.m. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So there must be a way they can, they can they run Paris Pass. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, time. Uh, let's go to. Uh, Second story. You know, as I said a while back, in a democracy, a planned protest where citizens vent their emotions as a result of harsh conditions is allowed, but then it is expectedly done according to the law. So ahead of the planned nationwide protest slated for August the 1st, the president and commander-in-chief, Bola Ahmed Tinobu, held separate meetings with governors on the platform of the all Progressives Congress, APC, traditional rulers from around the country, and Islamic clerics. Now, the meetings are believed to be part of efforts to prevent a breakdown of law and order as young Nigerians gear up for the nationwide protest. Now, the traditional fathers are not against the planned protest, but they want it to be civil, uh, Charles. Yes, I also want to be civil. And it's also good that... Uh, the government is reaching out to uh, non-state actors, like the traditional rulers, mm. um, leaders of thought, uh, of course, the, uh, the religious, religious leaders. Leader. Because yeah. these people, they command some, I mean, if more than a modicum um, level of, uh, of influence over their either adherents or the, their, their faithful. Mm. So, but well, I think um, what government is doing is, okay, as I said, reaching out to people. To, to, but again, when you are asking if a boy is crying, or if your child is crying, and the child is saying, this is what I want, as you are appeasing the child, if you will, then what the child says he wants, then you, the child must see you doing that thing that because is crying over. Because the child is impressionable. Yes. So mm. what government is saying, what government is doing, that, like what uh, some government officials said, that we should be patient because government has started putting things in place. Mm. So let government actually, you know, expedite actions, even if it's not long-term things they must put in mm. place. I mean, there are some things you can see immediately, immediately, so that let them put them in place. I'm sure by the, the time the citizen will begin to see all these short-term mm. uh, plans mm. of government, but they may say, indeed, government is on the path to, to doing things for us as a country. Even, but how do you weigh in here? I, I agree with, um, I agree with Chasse because, um, you know, I, 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 I read a story where the Emir of Zezo Ahmed Bamali, you know, he said insecurity is our number one problem mm. because a lot of farmers have been sacked from their farms, yeah. even from their homes, due to the activities of all of these bandits and all of that. So if the government can make sure that farmers can go back to the farms and also let them look at, um, you know, the agri value chain and look, look into the issues affecting this value chain. And also, there's something we are not looking at, and that is 
You know, we've always talked about Nigeria being a consumer nation. We're not exporting and everything. Yeah. But in the agri sector, some private farmers are exporting. And at this point where the farmers who would have, you know, you know, you know, flooded the market with their farm produce, have been sacked from their farms. These big farmers are exporting. They're not considering the local market. Mm. I went to a particular market where they, you know, there's this convergence of Gary sellers. And the market was scanty. And what they said was, ah, madam, if we were they sell us uh, cassava, then they carry them, go sell for outside of Nigeria. And that was mm. very, I mean, that is worrisome. I instructive. So there has to be a measure to put control on what they export. Yes, it, they are the owners of their farms and everything. But because mm. we are going through a very, a very harsh mm. period now, yes. they must be very considerate and consider the local market. You can't just pack all your, you know, uh, farm produce and then export everything. Yeah, more like putting all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Mm. All right. Um, we are joined now uh, via Zoom by a gentleman you want to meet and greet. Uh, he remains the youngest presidential aspirant and by definition, Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of DNF Oil and Gas, Dr. Nicholas Felix. Dr. Felix, are you there? Greet, greetings. I greet you. How are you? Oh, good evening, sir. I'm doing excellently well. Thank you for having me. Good to be here with you guys. Okay, then. Uh, so, what can you tell us here? I heard of uh, August 1st. Yes, uh, there's a lot to say regarding this planned protest. I needed to come out uh, this evening uh, to lend my voice. First of all, as an advocate for, for youth in governance, I am glad to see that the youth are, in, uh, you know, are interested about governance in our nation. That is quite exciting. And according to Section 40 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, every Nigeria has the uh, free right of assembly. By so free right, you know, to protect. We can't take that away. And I'm glad everybody has acknowledged that. And President, uh, President Bola made Tinubu administration. He's not denying that. And he's a Democrat. We understand that. But my fear is this protest has already been hijacked. One of the reasons I came out tonight to lend my voice is to plead with the Nigerian youth. We are not saying to protest is wrong. It is our fundamental right. I, I understand things are difficult, and the president has acknowledged that over and over again, you know, through his speeches, through our press statement, he understands that things are, you know, very tough. And you can see that the president is working very, very hard. Nobody can deny that. Yes, mm. uh, you know, it's going to take time and process. But this protest is not going to just end up as a peaceful protest. I'm seeing flyers already. People are even doing hashtag day of range. And many of us are just concerned about government property. As much as I'm concerned about, you know, government properties being vandalized, I'm very concerned about the properties and businesses of the average Nigeria on the street. That is why it shouldn't be just journalists or government officials lending their voice now. The traders, the, those of us who have, who have supermarkets, you know, entrepreneurs, you have to lend your voice because I'm afraid they are going to be the ones that will suffer the most, you know. Uh, talks are going to invade these protests, and there's going to be vandalization. There's going to be looting. Think about a man who has a, a woman who has a small supermarket, or the barber, those who you know who are struggling out there to make ends meet. At the end of the day, if this protest takes place and their shops are vandalized, where are they going to start from? The government is not going to end up building stores for them. So, as much as we are concerned about government properties. I'm more concerned that the average Nigeria are going to lose a lot. Let me share a, a brief story of what happened to you. A few months ago, I have a Philly station, one of our Philly stations here in Quakershe. The government, they, were, they are dualizing the road. And just by that single act, hoodlums were breaking into stores. My Philly station, worth hundreds of millions, would have been vandalized if not that the DPOs came to our rescue immediately. So that's to tell you every little chance talks have, they are going to invade this protest. And it's no longer just going to be a protest. And the intention of the Nigeria youth to go and protest, to call the attention of the president and the government, uh, is going to be aborted. So I'm saying to all Nigerian youth, I'm saying to our mothers, to our fathers out there, call our son, your sons and daughters to order that this is the wrong time to go into this protest. 
Again, we are not saying protest is wrong, but we are saying this is this has already been adjusted. Let's give the president time to work. I listen to, to commentaries a lot, both opposition. Everybody is saying the same thing. The president is acting. The president is listening. If there's one thing I've come to really appreciate about Pres uh, President Bola and Metinibu, the man listens. He acts. No matter how it looks, the people go out, even when, even with appointment. You see many times names are released and they are withdrew because the man is listening. So that's why when I hear people say uh, the president has been caged, he does not know what is going on, that is mm -hmm. far from it because the president is listening, is acting. For example, yesterday the governor's gathered, uh, the traditional rule has gathered, discussing about this. The president is listening, and I'm quite sure a few days from now, a few weeks, we'll be seeing more action. We need to give this administration more time. For this protest, I am vehemently against it, not because it's not about democratic right to do, because it has already been adjusted. And there is, I'm telling you categorically, they are going yeah. to be hungry. It's going to be the purpose of the protest uh, will be aborted. So yeah. it's the wrong time for us to go into it. Yeah, Dr. Phyllis, uh, I'm interested in that line. The protest has already been hijacked. Who or what by? No, I mean, it, it is no news that uh, there are some people who are still not, uh, they have not moved on from the election. Let's not deceive ourselves. That is very true. There are some people who have not moved on from, you know, losing the election. You know, if I were them, I would be looking forward to the next election. There are just some mm -hmm. people who want to make uh, a governance very difficult just to have something to say. Now, a lot are going on. Subsidy was removed. So much the president is putting in place. Everybody is working out to get things going. Imagine uh, protests, which will lead to heavy riot. Government properties burned down. Supermarket looted. You know, fire all over the place. Now we're going to be talking about. Look at it. Now one week we're talking about riot. Nothing else. No policy being discussed. Imagine for another one month, another two months, that we are trying to build what we already have. There are people who have not moved on. You can see it in the in the postcard already printed. You see it on WhatsApp pages, but this is not just protest of hardship. This is protest, let's make things difficult. Let's go to the world that we said it in the first place. Every Nigerian who is patriotic, if you really love this nation, this is the time to join forces for things to work. When we get close to election campaigning, I'm sure you will have a lot to campaign about. But for now, I mm -hmm. can tell you that this protest has already been hijacked. And the reason I use my <laughs> as, as an example is because it wasn't the government that sent the talk. Because that's what one thing you're going to be hearing. As soon as you hear breaking, as soon as you hear see talks coming in, you're going to hear is the is the government that sent the talk to go and invade hmm. this protest. It was peaceful. That okay. dualization of the road, government was dualizing it, which we, we love. It wasn't the government that sent talks. There are going to be people who are going to see this as an opportunity. You mark today the, the 26th of July. I'm, I'm saying it. People are going to use the opportunity to go and steal. We don't want that to happen. I'm concerned about oh. government property, but I'm more concerned about the businesses and the properties of private uh, individuals who may take another year to recover from this. We don't want that at this moment. All right, uh, Dr. Felix, I have two of my colleagues here. They have uh, a question each for you. Uh, for you. Uh, Ibanabo, go first. Okay, what I want to tell him is, what exactly are you going to advise Mr. President as regards your thoughts of um, the protests being hijacked already, so what are the what, what do you advise the federal government, the state government, to do to to make sure that whatever level the hijackers have taken over the protests, how do they how, how can the government salvage the situation as we speak? As, especially because you said Mr. President is a listening president. Go on. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, everybody knows that, that Mr. President is a listening president. Uh, and I must commend those around him, the young men around him, who pass information, uh, because we see President react just on social media. You would think he has no clue of what's going on on social media. So uh, I, I give them kudos for that. Now, first of all, I, I would love to see the president address the nation, address the youth. He's our father, you know, uh, as the father of the nation. It doesn't matter what party you belong to, APC, whatever you are. But you're a Nigerian citizen. We expect to see the president probably Sunday, Monday, uh, speak to, to us, the youth, to let us know uh, uh, what is going on. And number two, of course, our, our, our police force, they need to be on alert. I was sharing with somebody today. I said, I would rather see the police force over prepared than under prepared. I wouldn't want them uh, things to, to catch us unaware. 
We don't want uh, properties to be burned down. We don't want businesses uh, to, to be burned down. So we want to see uh, uh, the police being proactive in curbing those who are going to invade. And that's why if it's possible, I will still let there not be protests. But of course, there are still people who are going to come at us. The police need to be on guard to make sure that our private properties are, are secured and as well as government properties. But first, it would be nice to see that uh, uh, the president uh, address the nation. But also, I, I must say this, the governors, I am I'm quite disappointed that in this case, all we hear and see is just about the president, the president. If there's robbery in a state, you hear the president. If something is going on in the state, the president, where are the governors? We're not hearing anything from the governors. The governors are not speaking. Even if you can't come out as a governor to speak, where are your spokespersons? We're not hearing enough from the governors. And that kind of breaks my heart that governors are not doing anything. Even when it comes to the issue of palliative, I know we're talking about protests. Even when it comes to the issue of palliative, are you aware that oh, uh, the monthly allocation to these states has increased by over 40%? Some states even get 50%, and yet they do nothing. Everything is about the president, the president. We want to see governors come out with press statements. If you cannot speak, your, your, your spokesperson, they should be speaking now, appealing to the Nigeria youth, speaking to our mothers to speak to their sons, to speak to their daughters. The, the traders, they have to understand that this is going to affect them more. Not just government properties. You that own a barbershop, you that own uh, uh, a supermarket, you own one little kiosk. This will affect you more if riots break out in the midst of this protest. So we, there need to be more spoken, uh, you know, they need to come out. I want to see private citizens come out. I know we are not happy the way things are going, but I want you to look beyond just the government. Look at the average citizen uh, that will suffer from this. So first, I would love to see the president speak on this, and also the governors, not just the president. Each governor, you are the chief security officer of your state. So if there's riot in a those state, it's the governor is responsible. If there's riot in Lagos state, it's not the president. The governor is responsible. So they have to take accountability and responsibility of whatever goes on in their state. By now, the governor should be meeting with the commissioner of police in their state, meeting with the local government police, seeing how they can keep their state safe. There shouldn't be fire in electricity, and you're calling the president. That's why we have the governors. You know, it's so sad that now everything is about the president, the president. The other day, uh, uh, Labour had, the, they've been going on strike, they've been discussing with uh, the president on minimum wage. How come Labour have not met with their state governors to say, what do you do to alleviate the poverty of, of the citizens? Are you aware we have a union called NURG, National Union of Road Transport Association? I'm saying to myself, how come governors have not approached this union in their state and tell them, how do we subsidize transportation locally in this state? Give us strategy, give us structure, whereby, for example, for Benin to Lagos, if it was 8,000 before and now it's 12,000, how do we subsidize it as a state where you reduce the price down? These unions are there. Are they only there for, for strike? Are they only there for protest? The governors are not doing enough. They need to be able to see how they can put their state together. By the time each state begins to handle the issue, the pressure will be much at the federal level. I think the pressure is just too much because everything is about the president, the president. As much as we want the president to speak, I want to see governors from their states speak from your office. Let us know that you're taking this serious. If you can't speak, send your spokesperson, send your media aid to go and speak. Appeal to, to the average Nigeria youth that this is not the time uh, to protest. I want to see the governor speak. Thank, thank, thank you, Dr. Felix. Uh, we'll take a break now, uh, go on a commercial break, but please... We'll get back to you very shortly. Thank you.
cable. Great quality. Now with the new look. All right, welcome back, folks. Uh, we still have Dr. Nicholas Felix uh, guesting with us now. Uh, Dr. Felix, are you there? Yes, I'm here with you. Okay, recall that uh, former President Muhammad Buhari signed the Not Too Young to Run Bill into law in uh, 2020, do I remember, 2019 or 2018? 2018, yes. 20, 2018. But between yes. then and now, how many youths like you have dared to challenge the senior boys in the ring, if you understand what I mean? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, between, I remember in 2018, I was actually... Uh, 36 years old, then in my party, the issue was uh, the, your age cut off mark. You don't think you can make it. That was when Muhammad Gwari signed it. And that gave me the privilege to be able to contest at the age of 37, 2019. And I was a presidential candidate and uh, actually came third position in the general election. So, and that was a great move that, uh, by the president. And I still regard and respect him uh, today. But if you ask me, I think we, we have a president who is uh, youth friendly. You see it in all his appointments, even in the cabinet, youth ministers, uh, uh, women being there. So, and I would want to encourage every youth. The day the president uh, picked up uh, the certificate of election, I want every Nigerian youth, please do me a favor, go and listen to the speech of Mr. President. I was right in that, or I was, I'll tell you, I was excited. Everything in me was bubbling up that. Finally, we have a president who will give us the opportunity as youth to thrive in politics. Because that's one thing uh, that, you know, we've always struggled with. And one of the reasons, even the nomination for was 100 million naira, one of the reasons I went for that was just to have a youth voice. So having a president who, you know, believes in the youth, and again, this is not just politics. You see it in all the appointments. I can tell you there are more younger people uh, you know, around the president and even elderly ones. Again, we don't hate our fathers and our senior boys, like you said, but, you know, the population of Nigeria is more youth. And the president made a statement that day that he is the president that we hand over. I will mean, not be surprised that when uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu finishes, he will be the president that will go on record that it was the one that hand over to youth because he's already playing out. So that's why I'm even saying to the youth, I know things are bad, but we have a president who is youth friendly. Yes, we look at all the other things, subsidy that was removed, and all of these other things going on. But this is not the president that is not listening to us. He's listening to us as young men and women. He's, he's, he's adhering to what we say. And I'm quite sure in the next few days, you'll be seeing policies. Look at the student loan, for example. Where in the history of Nigeria have you heard about student loan? Over 15,000 people who apply. So the very two days when it was signed into law, now I'm sure they will be in the tens of thousands. Where have you heard of the fall? I live over two decades in America, so when I see some of these things is implementing, I'm saying to myself, wow, it's sticking beyond just the society, what we know uh, as norm in Nigeria. So we have a president who is youth friendly. My only hope is everyone who, young men and women, who have the opportunity to serve in governance, to be able to not disappoint us. So we don't become a mockery. Next time we are talking about youth in governance, so, you know, so our fathers, all our senior boys, don't really call us and say how many of you were given a position and yet you did not perform. So the atmosphere is clear. The, the, play, the ground is a play field for us as young men and women. We don't want to mess it up. We are here to support the president. We are here to let the president know we support your administration. We see what you're doing. We see all the policies you are putting in place. My only admonition would be we want to hear more. We want to hear uh, uh, some of the people around the president speak more. We want the communication to be very, very effective. That's the only part. Look at the local government autonomy that was signed. Now, local government can function very well. We didn't even hear much from the government about that. It was even opposition, people from social media who were saying, who were speaking about that. That's a great move for the president. I expect even the local government chairman to even come out and congratulate the president. For giving them such power, it means you can go and contest now as a local government chairman and not be afraid of what the governor will say. Well, I, I haven't seen that any of this local government chairman come out to even say thank you to Mr. President. You have given us power. Now we can walk. 
I want, you want to see more of this. It's not only when something not going well we speak about, something not going right we speak about. That is a great move when it comes to democracy. Now our local government have the power, they have the, the you know the, the, the will to do the right thing. But nobody has said thank you to Mr. President. Mm. I'm not the chairman of a local government, I don't intend to be one. But we are saying thank you to him because we know what that will do to the structure of the state and to our local government. Th thank you, Dr. Felix. One last question for my colleague here. Well, it's um, actually not a question. There are reactions to some of the things he said earlier, uh, which of course I I'm worried when uh, people are saying that the process has not been started at being hijacked. I'm worried. <laughs> because when Afghanistan is saying that uh, they've uncovered plots to unseat the government, I wonder how we came about those issues and that people want to put it on those. So, and, and that's why from there I will have to, I have to advise even those who are planning to go and put it, not to go and put it. Because uh, if they do, it may never, never, never all go away for anybody. Yeah. It may turn on. It may turn out to be very valuable because there we, are too we, many interests. We, we have been there before. There are too many interests right now. The, 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 even, it's not even the first hour of the protest. We've already been told, even from, from, from official quarters, that it has been hijacked. Um, so he's just asking, who buy? He said, well, who loves and who loves? Who are these who loves? Maybe outside Nigeria, I don't know. So I am going to, um, go, going to be appealing to those who are part of the plot or plan to um, uh, protest, and even those who are going to be joining, please. I think for now, this may not be an auspicious time for you to go on the streets because, as you have been told, it has been hijacked. You may not know who has hijacked it so that you can protest another time, but not for now because for now it may not. It may not actually go the way it should go. Then, uh, can I also, about uh, the uh, governors are not being told or something? No, no, no. Is it the government uh, governors go to... Time is the master on Governor go to Abuja every time to come. Time is the master on oh, okay. the Let, okay, Let's fine. thank Dr. Nicholas Felix for his time. Uh, the, Dr. Nicholas... We wish you well. Thank you very kindly for your intervention. Bye-bye now. All right. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, then. Uh, we return to uh, our settings here. Our next story is waiting. You know, one striking fallout of the July, 16, uh, July 11 Supreme Court pronouncement on financial autonomy uh, for local governments in the country is the hurried decision of state governors across the country to agree to hold council elections and fix dates for same. One curious aspect of this development is how linked the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is to it. Well, the doubt has been cleared by the commission's chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, who expressed readiness of his officers and men to conduct council elections if granted legal backing. He was addressing the National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters. Uh, we are getting somewhere, I dare say. So let's share this story by TVC News' Joke Adisa. Let's go there. Thank you. Countdown to the Edo and Undo governorship elections has started, and the National Assembly seeks to understand INEC's level of preparedness. Another matter of concern is the conduct of local government elections and the regular pattern of victory for political parties in power across the states. Others bother on the allegation of a bloated voters register and the delineation of constituencies for elections. We have seen elections held in several other countries around us. The percentage that you see there has been very, very encouraging. In Nigeria, our complaint is that the percentage is low because a lot of people have there are a lot of double or triple registrations. INEC affirms it can successfully conduct local government elections if given the responsibility. This responsibility for conduct of local government elections is transferred to INEC. Can INEC cope? The answer is yes, INEC can cope. By definition, INEC is the independent national electoral commission. But right now, we do national elections, we do state elections, we do local government elections. On the forthcoming governorship elections in Edo and Undo states, the commission says eight out of the 13 outlined activities leading to the polls have been carried out. The INEC chairman says the commission faces more challenges conducting off-season elections. You said INEC should penalize electoral offenders. The first condition towards prosecution of electoral offenses is arrest. 
We don't have police to make arrests. Secondly, investigation. You have to investigate the alleged offense to get the evidence that will lead to successful prosecution. We have no capacity for investigation. The lawmakers say there is a window of opportunity to regulate elections yeah. at the state it's level. There must be an amendment if we need the responsibility of the election, the total uh, conduct of the election to be transferred to INEC. That will require an amendment, and that is a constitutional amendment, not the electoral act. And we, we all know the procedure. The Joint Committee commends INEC for all its efforts and challenges at giving the nation credible and generally acceptable elections. Joke Adisa, TVC News, Abuja. All right, many thanks, Joke there. Um, Ibn Abosu, now the doubt has been removed. INEC is ready to conduct local government elections. You know, as many as the 20, 21 states uh, are yet to conduct local government elections. I, I know that Charles's uh, Edo State is gearing up for September election, uh, Ondo State uh, 20th, and uh, November. Yes, um, it's a good one. You know, the, the, the fear from the people has to do a lot with transparency and um, accountability. Uh, uh, and then they wonder what role the state that CX yes. uh, would play. State uh, Independent Electoral, Electoral mm. Commission. Maybe they're going to be working together mm. in synergy. The bottom line for us is deliver to us a free and fair election. And there is something we are not, we, we, we're not considering at this point. During the last election, last general election, there were some people who could not, you know, they were not able to get their voters Voter card. card yeah. Has that been addressed? There are people who are probably, for whatever reason, along the they have lost their voters' card. What can they do? And there are, there are people who had moved places. Yes. Yeah. So these are, these, are, these are issues that should be addressed. And unfortunately, we don't have that time to, mm. to address these issues. And then also, it's not going to be a huge problem because the elections won't take place, you know, at the same yes, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. have various states with various uh, different uh, mm. election dates. So bottom line for us and every, every, everyone out there is there has to be transparency and accountability on the part of which, whatever body is going to be overseeing the local government election. Yeah. Charles, that Nigerians are fastidious, you know, not an easy people to please. Uh, it's very clear here. Yes. But, but for once, let's have faith in our public officials. Yes, let's have faith. Um, but again, if you want to have faith on anybody, public officer or not, you must demonstrate that uh, indeed there's something you are doing, they are doing yes. that will, you know, elicit that faith from mm. them. Yeah. You. So uh, for faith, INEC, faith, trust, faith like trust it, it should is be earned. earned. Yes. Yeah. So for INEC uh, to be saddled with that additional responsibility to control, it will be good. Honestly, as you said, they are staggered elections and not election for a whole, um, the whole nation for one day. Uh, so, but again, as somebody said there, the, we have to tinker with the constitution. Because if you look at uh, section 7, section 1 of the constitution of the National Constitution, Amendment, it says that practically that the system of local government by democratically elected local government council is under this constitution guaranteed. And of course, accordingly, the government of every state shall, subject to section 8 of this constitution, ensure their existence under a law which provides, and so on. You mm. see, the why people are afraid because of this CX. For instance, I, I visited a local government, I'm not mentioning where, what state, yeah. recently, and I now saw uh, what is a probable reason why you may not have a free and fair election in any state. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a local government secretariat, a massive um, uh, structure. Mm. When you go in, to the left wing is the chairman's office. Here is the CM, they call CM, uh, 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 I think council manager's office. Okay. You go right, you see the vice chairman. Right here is the CIEC office. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay. I'm thinking, if there's a CIEC office here, you just walk after one office, get to the vice chairman's office, you walk this way, the council manager, you walk here, the chairman's office. How can you conduct so, elections so, so, and the chairman will not win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the you understand problem what is how independent... At the state election. No, that's what I'm saying. How in the how in the, <laughs> it's not like you have Ma, uh, Mahou, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, his office, uh, President Rumu's office here, 
uh, the, the vice chairman of the vice president's office here, then you move about, you have a, a, a right on the board by the Abiyan officer, then you get to the office of... I mean, how is it possible? If you say it's independent, first of all, even the structure... Even about, he's thinking for the Nigerian. Even board. the structure itself has to be independent. <laughs> exactly. Mm. The structure, mm. the physical structure mm. has to be independent. Mm. Because when you lump these offices together, I mean, they, they interface every day. There's no way you can say, conduct election that will see this man, who you may have got some goodwill from over time. I mean, Christmas is there, other things are there, and you know what I mean. So I think if we must start to get these things right, first, the structures have to be independent, number one. Number two is that if, if it's possible, we tinker with that aspect of the Constitution where they now we now take the, 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 um, uh, the, 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 what's the that, that power from the states to conduct the election and vest it upon the national, the INEC. If INEC can, because INEC, for instance, is going to do what it is do, whether it's going to be in Gombe or Edo or Udo, mm. it's going to do his job. So it's not, it's, INEC will not have any vested interest in any particular state or any particular yeah, state. Yeah, but the, the INEC chairman has told you. It, the, 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 if, the, the fears are laid. Yeah, but the, the if there, we have to answer the if. He said, they are ready. He says, are you ready? Yes. But if they are given the responsibility, if, if. so that yeah. proviso if is very, very no, no, no. strong. Legal responsibility. No, hey, but, no. but says, again, it has to be given. So, so going to the National Assembly yes. is going to the right place. Hey, but again, there are processes. That's what I'm saying. If you want to do it before even the next election, they do so, whatever. I mean, local government, because mm. most of the states where you have this, they are now rushing yes. to quickly conduct elections for themselves because, yeah. you know, they can't, they, can't, they can't go to Abuja to go and be asking for their mm. reallocation. Oh, so yeah. be, before, they, before they go over there to that, conduct elections, so this thing should be expedited to ensure that that power is vested upon INEC. Yeah. So that INEC yeah. can stop it. I mean, this if you know, but, uh, suspicion is second nature to us. Um, earning the trust is uh, of government is the problem we're dealing with here. that is the problem because over the years at some point people have been disappointed at some point it has, it became obvious that you know you cannot trust some set of people yes. so until you know like we said trust is earned yeah. you don't go pick it off the shelf <laughs> you have to oh, you earn don't it. demand it yes you have to earn it so this is the time for INEC to begin to you know how do you how do you convince the people that they are going to bring about a free and fair election. So now they are going about wanting to take responsibility. But on the other hand, we are looking at the physical structure mm. as it pertains to, like he said, the location of the yeah. uh, yeah. CIEC mm. and the chairman and all of that. But even outside of that, CIEC office could be located somewhere far, you know, water can pass under the bridge. Pass, yes. Me, I know that once suspicion is created, fed, oh, okay. he, you know, is raised, every other thing feeds we'll it. Follow, yeah, yes. Exactly. Mm. That's so, so, but we just, I, I think at this point, I mean, this is the first time that uh, we are looking at this. So, let's give them the benefit of doubt that they are going to deliver, you know. Very if, free and free. Again, if, 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 given, if the, given the power, that's yes. it, because that, that, yes. one, that one is there. You there's can't, an you if, there's an if there. there's an if there that has to be solved, <laughs> yes. Well, oh, okay, at least we're getting someplace. Yes. We're getting someplace. Yes. Um, before the pronouncement of the Supreme Court mm -hmm. on November 11, at least 22 states, including my, my Akwaibom, had not had council election. For, for a they will say they never had even governor. Go, what do you go? There are some governors in the no, south that never, never get. Never so never we had. know some, some, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, but now everybody wants to go there yes. because the proviso is unless you hold council elections, uh, allocations, allocations from FAC them. will not come. <laughs> so, if, if they understand that is so, why, politicians are saying, trying to play safe. Yeah, yes. this, which is why I'm saying now that some governors who are you know, are losing out from that, are all in a mad hurry to quickly <laughs> conduct. That's what I'm saying, that whatever I need to do, whatever I needs to do, whatever we as Nigerians need to do, we must ask the National Assembly, saddled with that responsibility, to tinker with relevant section of the Constitution to yeah. please to please do that now. Yeah. Because it's not tomorrow, it has to be now. If you do that, then those governors in those states who think they are smart Alex, 
they want to go over and do certain things to quickly, hurriedly put those mm -hmm. structures in place so that they can ask, where's my money, where's my location? We'll be told, no, 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 the responsibility has been taken away from you. Mm -hmm. So that, indeed, that physical federalism we've been campaigning for, that uh, uh, devolution of power and all that, we can begin to see a semblance of it as we march towards even the, the greater picture at the end of the day that will all benefit every one of us in Nigeria. But the way it is, as I said, both physical, the physical independence, the whatever it may you say about what happens on the water, all this independence, we need to ensure that this independence is, you know, is, 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 uh, is uh, defined and delineated, if you wait, so that we can understand that whoever is doing it is doing it for the sake of Nigeria, not for the sake of uh, a few. For a few. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. INEC conducting local government elections, we are looking at the ideals of federalism. Yes. Yes. Mm. And um, we are, we, is, is, we, we are, you know, like they would say, there is, there is light at the end of the tunnel. We are seeing it already. Because if you look at... Uh, the, if you... Not like suspicious minds <laughs> who think it you know, is an even, unrushing train. Even with all of the suspicion, you know, no matter how, how good you are, at your first attempt, you're going to make one or two mistakes and you learn from there. So what I'm looking at is, it's a beautiful one because now um, dividends of democracy is being brought to the grassroots. That's it. Mm. People are going to be feeling the presence of government now. Unlike before that, you have to start looking at how you get to the, gov uh, the governor yeah. or even the president. Because if you go to some local government secretariat, you'll be, um, you'll be shocked mm. at the dilapidated nature of uh, the structures. Uh, uh, Madam Dixon, let me tell you, no local government chairman, including yours and mine, have immunity. So when they are put there, then go walk. They must work. Because if any chairman messes up, that, charge, that, is, that is if, the, if he the, or she will be kicked. On the condition that um, you have a, a federal body conducting elections to that place, is that... The condition, but because uh, if we, you, we, if you we, we, we have gone past that. No, no, because it, the, the chairman way, of the what is this? Is, the mm. chairman is responsible. The chairman, whatever is, you do with your he, budget, he, he told you he was ready you for are going the to exercise. To the with the way it is now, you right? Are going to answer to the people. Well, again, uh, we've not tried it. I mean, somebody asked the other day. Was it Babaji that asked? Uh, okay, I think somebody else asked that. Even when yeah. that judgment was given, uh, did you hear from any chairman? Maybe. Applauding it or going to church for time. But, but I, I can tell you that both Nolge, if you remember, yeah, Nolge, yes, Nolge. and Algon, Algon. reacted. Uh, reacted, they were, yeah. They were happy. Okay, well. For once, their voices <laughs> were happy. are going to be heard exactly, again. Exactly, yes. <laughs> well, anyway, we, we begin to see that in the, in the days to come. But maybe after an election has been, not because most of the elections that brought them in now were uh, at the behest of. A chief executive on this. I hear we must. I, I hear we, we must go. Okay. Don't promote any suspicion anymore. <laughs> okay. uh, let's thank uh, Ibn Abad Dixon for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, Charles. We you. we can't thank, thank you enough. Thank you. So that will just about do it for the show today. If you missed any part of it, not to worry. The repeat broadcast is slated for 11 later tonight. And of course, on Sunday, we have a two-hour stretch for you, beginning from between 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. We are also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Citizen Jones Hussein. Bye-bye now. Take care.